Hello world, I'm Chris Perillo, and as promised, I am going to give you my iPhone 7 Plus review. Right now, today, at least. Not immediately, because first I want to show you my growing pop vinyl collection, specifically around Rogue One, a uh, movie that I am absolutely excited for. Way more excited than I am for anything else uh, right now, today, specifically, because I'm about to jump into... Something that I've kind of been putting off for a few different reasons, hoping that it was going to get better, but it really hasn't. Back to the iPhone 7 Plus review in just a moment. Uh, I'm missing a few of the current pop vinyl, specifically from Rogue One. I've been waiting to, to find a couple of exclusives. There are a few missing. Maybe you could tell me which ones are missing from the current array that happen to be available, including a, an exclusive or two. But uh, I wanted to I wanted to talk about that because... I wanted to add something happy, and I have to do this because there's a lot that makes me very sad about where Apple's head is at right now, uh, specifically in relation to the precious, <laughs> the, uh, the iPhone 7 and the 7 Plus. I've already reviewed the iPhone 7 and returned it. I have no want, need, or desire to hold on to uh, gadgets, because inevitably one day, this pop vinyl right here, or let's just say that one, is probably going to be worth more than the iPhone 7. Or or even the iPhone 7 Plus. So that makes me happy. Star Wars makes me happy. Uh, gadgets are gadgets. They're fancy screwdrivers, right? And for the most part, I am going to say something that I am confident is going to upset the people who keep technology as a core part of their identity. Um, this review is not for you. This review is not for uh, the, the, the nerds who think that hardware is the end-all be-all. This review is not for the people who think that the only thing that's interesting about a smartphone is the hardware. Uh, this review is not for people uh, who think that everything that uh, has technology in it is great. This, this is not the review for you, okay? Um... This review is for people who like Star Wars more than technology, though, I will tell you that. I appreciate technology for what it does. It enables. But the thing that I'm about to say, which is going to be uh, incredibly controversial, but incredibly true, all smartphones are the same. Can you believe you just heard that? What, what, what do I mean when I say that? Do I mean they look the same? No. Do I mean they, uh, you know, work the same way? No. But they're the same. So what then differentiates these smartphones today? The web browser, of course! No, no, because uh, you can get a web browser on any one of these pocket computers these days. Oh, there's a second controversial thing I just laid down. This is a, a computer I use more frequently than that computer. What? This computer with this big screen is not used as frequently as this computer? Yeah, because um, unlike some people, I, I don't like sitting in the same place staring at a screen all day. I, I enjoy things um, in life in, in general and still enjoy being connected, still enjoy technology for what it does. It's an enabler, not a destination. Why am I so passionate about this? Because I, uh, I've been on this journey this incredible journey with uh, a couple of dogs and a cat. <laughs> Did anybody else get that reference there? One of my favorite Disney movies of all time. The original and even the reboot. I didn't mind that at all. Uh, <laughs> veering back onto a topic that I've been trying to avoid because I know some people just, they, they wrap their whole lives around this and I'm like, eh. This is not worth much more than what it can do and how it can do it. Uh, I will go as far as to say that any one of these pop vinyl behind me is going to be worth more over time than either of the new iPhones. And I could probably say that every year. That's that's how technology works. That's how, how it goes. It's how it moves ahead. Uh, that's not to strip your emotional attachment to this, but I don't have an emotional attachment uh, to this because I know I'm going to discard it in another year. So I've been upgrading iPhones uh, from the very beginning, and uh, the iPhone 7 Plus and, and the iPhone 7 really marked the first time that I've 
ever felt Apple's made a, a, a pretty big step backwards in terms of general usability and uh, a general um, value, I guess, in a, in a broader sense. Uh, now, I'm not complaining about the, the lack of the headphone jack. That's that's what I think. People, oh, headphone jack. <laughs> it's not a thing for me. I don't care. I don't use the headphone that often. If I did, I'd probably be one of those. I'm, uh, so instead, I'm going to be uh, about software. Because you know what? Software matters more than the hardware. Period. End of story. No debate. And Apple has failed on every measurable front in terms of software quality control uh, since uh, iOS 7. Now, I know some of you are intent on, on, on saying, but Chris, it's the world's fastest smartphone according to these synthetic benchmarks. Or even in tests, I could launch this app quicker and then uh, multitask over to this other app and then, and, and, and then it moves faster than the app moves on another device. That's, that's great. That's great. You know, in fact, iOS used to be a platform such that how it was engineered, every time you got a new iPhone and a faster piece of hardware, iOS became better. It used to be that way. And then Apple just decided to change things up. Uh, my initial impressions with uh, the latest round of iPhones weren't positive. My, my initial impressions, for the most part, have stuck. And I only promised to do this iPhone 7 Plus review after I used it, unlike a lot of quote-unquote tech reviewers who touched it for, you know, a day or a week and then did a review. Uh, I've been using it. That's how I prefer to share my experiences, you know. Um, I got no horse in this race. I don't care. I'm just telling you what I've experienced. I'm going to tell you uh, what I believe. Because that's all I got. I don't care how many people disagree or agree with me. Not anymore. I'm too old. Um, I uh, wanted to wait until iOS 10.1 was finalized before I did this review. Because I, I felt that I was going to give another, <laughs> yet another benefit of the doubt, if I can say that correctly. I kind of stumbled over my words there. Uh... Some people were saying, well, Apple will fix the software. They'll fix it. They'll fix it. They'll fix it. And they never do. See, that's that's the funny part, is that people are actually delusional enough to believe that a company can fix a problem that they don't perceive is a problem. Don't buy a product based on its promise for what it could be. Buy it or get it, rent it, however you attain the product based on what it is today because that is what's known. Choosing any other path is uh, an exercise in folly. So I waited until 10.1 was final. Apple certainly has ironed out uh, a couple of bugs, fixed a couple of issues. In fact, today, the day of this review, um, I, I pushed a little further. I, I waited. I, I am on the uh, public beta of uh, 10.2. The first public beta was released maybe less than an hour ago, and I installed it. Got the new emoji. Happy about that. Love emoji. Although, uh, shame on Apple. Uh, they're making their emoji more lifelike, and they, they look great. Don't get me wrong. But this just speaks to, I think, the heart of the my problem. Remember when iOS was supposed to be flat, and we were getting rid of skeuomorphism? What happened? What happened to that? Like, the emoji are getting more realistic. And, and, and less cartoony, even though they are still very cartoony. But they're not flat. They're like 3D. I'm like, wait a minute. But, 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 but the OS is flat. So why are the emoji not flat? So wait, is... Ha what? And, and that's kind of how I feel. <laughs> iOS has become a lot of... Wait, Um, I'm only talking about these problems because I care that uh, they can and should be fixed and then they li likely won't be fixed or addressed anytime soon. That, that I think is, is probably what's most disappointing is that I think we are past the end of an era. We're not at the end of an era with the iPhone. We are past 
the end of the era that uh, we had known Apple for. I, I think Apple as a company is certainly evolving and they're certainly making money. I'm not going to fault them for that. Um, but I think they've, they have lost their religion. And it shows. And, and that's been my impression with the iPhone uh, 7 Plus. So uh, let's get a few of the dozy does out of the way. Big screen, like the big screen, uh, moved from an iPhone 6S <clears throat> to uh, an iPhone 7. Uh, screen, The screen's great. Single-handed use can happen. Uh, it does happen every so often, but I, I, uh, I like the big screen. I cannot lie. I don't care about the resolution. I know some people just like, ah, but the resolution is not, a, I, it's a law of diminishing returns. I mean, how sharp do I need it to be? Not that is the bottom line. Um, it, it's worked well. Now, some would say, well, the color depth in the display is, is of a higher caliber than older iPhones. I can't see the difference. It, it's a better screen on paper or on the screen. It's a better screen because it's a wider color gamut. That's awesome. I, I love knowing that. But I can't necessarily see those, uh, the, the differences. And if I could, there, it's subtle to the point where it doesn't change my experience whatsoever. Um, I, the cameras are great. Outstanding. I, I, I think that uh, they, they were um, certainly... Uh, 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 better than they had been before, for the most part. Uh, I have, even in software revisions, noticed discrepancies uh, between the iPhone 6S camera and the 7 Plus camera, and even the 7 camera. Some fringing uh, around the, the perimeters of, of the photos. Low light photo uh, and video has been good. Um, I, it's difficult to say that they missed the mark with the camera because I think they did well. But I also think they did well with the 6S. And I wouldn't say, just kind of a little shortcut, that the 6S camera is any worse than the iPhone 7 or 7 Plus camera. I wouldn't upgrade for the camera, is what I'm saying. Um, it, it didn't blow me away like it did some. Some people just blew away. I'm like, eh. It, it worked. That's the thing. It's like, it works. Uh, the speakers, uh, nice to have, uh, uh, you know, uh, more volume on the phone, uh, since I, I do listen to uh, videos on the phone sometimes like this, you know, I'll cut my hands like that and redirect the sound, and sound comes out of that speaker and this speaker, and it works. I, I like having that. Uh, it, it is certainly something that uh, I have uh, absolutely appreciated, uh, having more speakers richer sound uh it absolutely works uh, uh well for me um I, I tried the portrait mode i i uh this is this is a software tweak that apple released with I, ios 10.1 uh, where it allows you to do this faux depth of field book effect and uh, it's neat and it certainly does work but i kind of put it in gimmick territory right now it's a gimmick I think uh, another app could easily come along and do the same damn thing on older phones. So, I wasn't blown away. I wasn't, I, I guess I was underwhelmed by it, you know, expecting something better. And uh, I'm waiting for that better to come along. It will someday, maybe. Okay, so that's the, the cameras. Um, video turned out well. Front-facing camera is great to have a higher resolution with that. I use that for the vlogs. Um, Sometimes when I'm in the car, and you can see that uh, you know play out uh, with regularity. I'm using the uh, the standard iPhone case, which works well enough. I don't mind it at all. Um, it has certainly protected me from a couple of drops. I can tell you that. Uh, I, I can't say that I fumbled with the iPhone Seven Plus more than I fumbled with the Six S, though. Um, it's more it's more fumble prone <laughs> because it's bigger. <laughs> it really is. Um, but I haven't had any damage. Thank goodness. Uh, so the Touch ID sensor, it's not really a button, it's a faux button, right? Uh, I like the Taptic Engine. There are times that I wish it, it had more oomph to it. Uh, I always loved uh, Taptic, or I'm sorry, uh, um, uh, the kind of feedback, you know, the, the pressing and the, it's tap, tap, not Taptic, um, is it Taptic? Hang on, I need a sip of coffee. Um, haptic. I knew I was in the ballpark. 
have always liked haptic feedback, um, and, and and certainly I, I appreciate some of the finer points that, that they're uh, they're pushing through with software and the the, the taptic uh, engine. Um, I've only been stymied by it a few times. Like if I don't have my uh, finger on it exactly, or if there's something in the way, the button just doesn't work. It doesn't press. Sometimes that can be annoying, but for the most part, I haven't found it to be a problem or as dramatic of a problem as I would have expected it to be. So it gets a passing grade, not like super annoying where I want to just take the phone and chuck it, uh, at least for that. And I'm talking specifically, remember, I, I, I've covered the, the, the top level of some software problems, but I, wanna, I wanted to cover the hardware at this stage. Um, no headphone jack, hasn't bothered me, haven't needed to use it. Let's see here, what else is related to hardware? Screen, sound, haptic engines, engine, I should say. Um, what, what else? Uh, let's see here, I've got my list. Battery! Haven't had a problem. I can get through an entire day without recharging. I recharge it every night. Uh, sometimes on, on heavier use days, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll start running the meter down, but hasn't been a problem. If I can get through a day, I am happy uh, with the, the battery, and it's it's worked out uh, quite well um, for the most part. So that's 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 the that's the thing everyone seems to complain about is is the battery life. You know, I'm, I'm pretty uh pretty conservative though when it comes to uh, doing things, even though I use this as my primary computing platform, um, the, the battery still, it's, it's a champ, makes it through a day. I cannot and will not complain. I, I do uh, often uh, plug it in in the middle of the day. You know, if I'm driving somewhere, I'll plug it in because, uh, you know, I might as well just get, get a little charge, get a little boost. Um, let's see here. I'm checking back there. All right, we're good. Let's live chat with my patrons. Sometimes they keep me on track and very often they throw me off track but that's why i love them uh the uh next thing uh is yeah i guess i gotta go back to software i was i was trying to trying to avoid talking about it because it's so uh seemingly subjective but i i've already gone so deep into my disdain for apple's choices um the software isn't that great it works I'll give it that. It does work. It does function. But that's not an accolade. Uh, I, I feel that if there's an Achilles heel for the iPhone 7, it's specifically its lack of uh, polish. Some people say, well, my iPhone's running great. Good for you. No, it's not. You can't necessarily see the problem, but the problem's still there. And it persists past the, the uh, uh, iOS 10.1 release, and, uh, you know, uh, by all accounts, uh, uh, iOS 10.2 is not going to be any better in terms of, of performance, because Apple doesn't see it as a problem. I, uh, I just have issues with the amount of sloppiness that I continue to run into, and I'm not alone. Uh, you know, you can say that I'm the only person who points these things out, but that doesn't mean that I'm alone. Other people, by the way, are pointing them out. Um... Apple's got a huge software problem, and I'm not talking about crashes, right? That's a, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about polish. It's so uh, unpolished. It's an unpolished Apple. Um, software is designed to continuously evolve, so Apple theoretically could address these problems, but they haven't yet, at least wholesale. Um, Apple's not a software company. Um, I, I, I don't know if they want to make a better experience for people, generally. Uh, if it doesn't uh, hurt device sales, why would they change? Why would they be motivated to change? Um... I think that the 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 uh, the device on the whole. I mean, it works. Like I said, it works. Right. I'm not unable to do things. It's just to me, my my review. If I had to encapsulate it in a phrase, it's uh, death by a thousand cuts. If the software performance was just buttery smooth and no frame rate inconsistencies, uh, no jitter. I wouldn't have any problem saying, yeah, I really I really enjoy this device. It was a great upgrade, but it wasn't a great upgrade. Um it was it was an upgrade. 
kind of ish. <laughs> I, I I wish Apple would treat software as well as it treats its hardware. I don't care what a device looks like. I really genuinely don't. Listen, this, this is like like garish, like bad. I don't generally um, get put off by uh, hardware design choices. Generally, I like my devices black. I like them uh, without logos on the front. Um, clean. That that that's it. You know, I, I don't care about uh, anything else because honestly, I don't see much else of the device, even in uh, regular use. I get lost in the software. That's 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 what happens. And the problem is, is that Apple has slapped together so many um, layers of code that <sighs> holes and gaps are starting to show. iOS has not been on a good trajectory since the release of iOS seven. It's ripe for a reboot, but I don't think it's going to get rebooted. Because I don't think Apple sees it as a problem. And you know what? Maybe the market doesn't either. I'll give you that, right? Oh, go for it. You know, if you, if, you, if you don't have a problem with iOS, that's awesome. You don't have a problem with your phone? Cool. I have a big issue uh, with giving this a passing grade simply because it's an iPhone. I have a big issue with giving this a passing grade simply because uh, the hardware looks uh, spectacular. Uh, I have a problem giving this a passing grade simply because it's technology, simply because it's the latest one. Um, I have a problem giving this a passing grade because I don't think it deserves a passing grade. Without good software, good hardware, useless. It's a brick. It's a fancy brick. It's a brick that does a lot of different things. But it's also a brick that has inconsistent animations and transitions and dropped frames and jitteriness and shame. That's I just kind of want. I want the. I need to put this on some kind of like remote control vehicle and drive it down the street and walk behind it with a veil. I think she was wearing a veil, right, with a bell on, going ding shame, ding shame. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so um, I'm not impressed with the iPhone 7 Plus. It, it's, uh, it's a situation where the, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And it's uh, a never-ending series of... And I've got it documented. I'm not, I'm not uh, alone in this. It's, uh, it's a problem that Apple doesn't perceive as a problem, that many people don't uh, perceive as a problem. So then, one might ask, uh, what keeps you using iOS? Stockholm Syndrome? <laughs> um, ecosystem? Simplicity? I, I have to uh, kind of grit my teeth at the moment. That could very well change. I am telling you I am on the cusp. And uh, yeah, some, for some people, the decision is easier. For me, it's uh, not as easy. No, not to admit when I'm wrong. I'm not wrong about this. I'm not wrong about iOS having these problems. It's very well documented. Some people are willing to forgive uh, Apple for that. I am not. See, I'm not in the habit of forgiving billion-dollar companies who should know better. I'm not in the habit. I didn't give Microsoft a, a passing grade. Why should I give Apple a passing grade? <laughs> See, that, that to me would invalidate my integrity as someone who's always treasured software and valued software and technology experiences. Sometimes the latest is not the greatest. And, and I just feel that uh, because of iOS, uh, this, is, uh, this is not the greatest iPhone. I, I don't know what the greatest iPhone is. But it's not this. Despite what Apple might claim. So uh, let me go ahead. Now that I've talked about hardware, software, general experience, for the most part, uh, wrap it up with things I like, things I don't like. Who is this for? Who is this not for? Things I like. <coughs> I 
I like the front facing camera, higher quality, very nice. It's worked very well for vlogging. I'll, you know, you hit record, put it in the dashboard and, uh, you'll see it play out in the vlogs. Uh, I, I sometimes have to bump up the volume to match my other volume, but it's generally not an issue. So the front facing camera, I, I like, I like that. Uh, I had it, my low, I need low battery mode for my iPad here. I, I don't want to talk about the iPad right now. Um, but I had to turn that on. What? Okay. Um, <laughs> strange. The, uh, uh, the, another, another thing I like, um, I'm not struggling. I swear I'm not struggling. The screen size, it, it is nice. It, it is nice to see more at, at one time, uh, moving from a smaller screen to a larger screen. It, it has been, uh, you know, beneficial, especially uh, when it comes to uh, reading and sharing and scrolling, viewing. I like the bigger screen. I really, I really do. It would be difficult for me to go to not a smaller resolution. I'd happily go to a smaller resolution if it meant better performance, but, um, I like the screen size. I'm, I'm now accustomed to a phablet. So I like the screen size. I'll give you one more thing. Battery life. I can't complain about it. I can't complain about battery life. I'm not going to do it. Um, so those are three things that I like. Things I d didn't like. <laughs> okay. okay. Let me try to just keep it to three, folks. Um, the insane lack of polish throughout the entire iOS experience. It's one thing. All right, see, there you go. I encapsulated it in, into one thing. Um, another thing I didn't like was uh, uh, seemingly having to get 74 photos just to get one that I liked. But that's something that I, I experienced with a lot of smartphones, so it's kind of like a, almost like a given. I did have an issue, though, with, and I still do in some cases for, for some odd reason, having this, this weird blurring like doubling uh, effect in the corners uh, of certain photos uh, that I've documented in the past. Um, that that was something that I didn't like because it just it caused me great concern. Like, did I get a faulty device or are other people experiencing it? They were, by the way, it wasn't a faulty device. Um, so I, I, I didn't like that. I didn't like the fact that I felt like I was getting a, a not so great camera in certain shots. So, the, you know, the, the, that was the challenge. Like sometimes it would happen, other times it wouldn't. And you couldn't predict it. That to me is that haphazard nature of wait, what? I, I, I don't like that in general. Uh, you know, I just, I want to be able to predict that something bad is going to happen. Something wrong is going to happen. And when I can't predict it, it just, it, it decreases my, uh, uh, um, overall experience and, and, and that speaks to the, the lack of software polish I think uh, another thing I didn't necessarily uh, like is um, again I'm, I'm thinking I'm, I'm being very serious not flippant about this uh, I do miss the physical button I really do I understand why Apple went this direction especially with like waterproofing makes sense I've had I've uh, in in all my phones I, I, I that I've used I did damage it with water once dropped it into a can of a cola like or a cup of cola that was i i, I fixed it i solved the problem i can't remember which one which ver, uh, version or which phone that was but uh yeah i i i i, I appreciate the fact that it, it does have waterproofing but i don't know i i, do, I miss the physical button I, I think that's one thing that i don't like about uh this this iphone and it could take some getting used to i i think i can get grow accustomed to not uh having that. Most of my complaints, if not pretty much all of my complaints are related to software with the iPhone, which I'm sure is just the opposite of what other people uh, have perceived. So who is the iPhone 7 Plus for? For someone who lives inside of Apple's ecosystem, for someone who hasn't upgraded their iPhone in four years, for uh, someone who uh, is looking to have the best pocketable iOS screen experience and can put up with a larger than iPhone 7 screen. <laughs> I was stretching on that one, admittedly. Who is this not for? Um... 
it's not for people who appreciate high quality with their technology products and gadgets. It is not for people who are happy with their current device. Don't rush out to get this. It's not for people who I gotta be careful about this one. I struggle. I really struggle with this because I'm trying to be as careful as I possibly can be, understanding that everybody on the planet has a bias and, and trying not to um, ex- confuse my bias with empirical evidence because there's a difference between the two. But I, I just, I don't, I think this is probably the first, I, I'm going to say this, I think this is the first iPhone generation the sevens, uh, where I, I just don't have a, a recommendation for everybody to go get get it. There's there's nothing compelling about this device to upgrade to. Nothing. For me, maybe you value one of those uh, uh, pieces, uh, the, the hardware changes. That's awesome. Then 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 it's for you. But I, I just can't give a wholehearted yes. You need to go out and upgrade to this. And, and honestly, this is the first iPhone that I've said that about. I'm going to I'm going to explain it that way. Never before have I said don't. But I I'm sitting here and saying don't. I don't know who that's not for. It's uh it's been a disappointment. That's a word for you. Um but again, for the most part it's been a disappointment because of uh software. So uh, if you don't mind software uh, issues, eh, you probably don't care what device you use. <laughs> I'll put it that way. You don't. You probably don't have much. You, your your bar is not set very high. If you if you don't have a an eye for quality control, you you probably use just about anything. But uh, I don't. See, I I, I understand that uh, my time is is the most valuable thing that I have, and I would rather fill my life with things that bring happiness and joy and um, things that I love and appreciate. And Apple's direction is now not one of those things. It's yet another reason why I become more excited when I find a new Star Wars collectible than I do when a new gadget's released. I mean, I, I appreciate these things for what they do, but... There's a review for you. If you want a review and an a- someone make an animated GIF, this is my review of the iPhone 7 Plus. I think my face says it all, really. <laughs> um, if I missed anything that I didn't cover in this video that I didn't already cover in an earlier video, I'm not skipping out intentionally. Let me check to see if uh, anything else has come in. Oh, I've got some questions here from patrons. Uh, I may end up saving those questions for Thursday's TLDR broadcast for the patrons. Uh, TLDR is uh, typically a patron exclusive. Uh, I, I do these types of videos uh, as a general uh, service to everybody else. Um, some people appreciate them, some people don't. Uh, but, you know, it's it, it's not my job to be anybody but myself. So, you get what you get. And you get someone who is far more excited... <laughs> For other things. And for good reason. Um, I think I'm going to wrap up. I think I've said everything else I needed to say. Uh, I uh, I love you. I do. Even if you don't love me. It doesn't have to be a two-way street. I appreciate you. Even if you can't really hold up your end of the argument. But at this point, I'm going to leave you to your own devices. Today's free highlight was brought to you by all of my active patrons from chrisperillo.com. If you want access to the full TLDR episodes, both audio, video, past, present, and future, which can be up to an hour long or longer, with even more tech insight from me, plus other bonus content without ads, and supporting me at the same time, 
you can sign up to become one of my supernomies too. This is just a brief taste of what I'm producing for you. Again, get more through chrisperillo.com.